Good evening everyone, I'm Nat Adamopoulos and this is Full On Football, the show that promotes local South Australian football. Well, we've got a really big special show tonight and as you saw from the start there, this whole show is totally dedicated to Martin Crook. Um, and as all of you would know, most of you would know that uh, Martin Crook uh, passed away um, very suddenly, very tragically last year while he was away with the Joeys. So, to celebrate all the wonderful things that he did and his contribution, not only playing but coaching and administration, uh, we thought we'd have some friends of his and some ex-players uh, uh, or I guess uh, people that he coached and brought up uh, and to allow to be played, playing elite uh, football with us here tonight. So we've got ex-Sassy players, we've got current Sassy players and a very, very special person that you're going to meet is Martin's son, Joseph Crook, later on. So that's somebody that I want everyone to know who this young man is because he's a wonderful young man. With us uh, to start off the show is, uh, of course, an ex sassy player. He's a wonderful man too because he's still playing the game today and uh, journeyed through playing for Young Socceroos, Olympic team, etc. in the first inaugural Sassy squad and that is of course Michael Peroni from Metro Stars. Welcome back to Fallen Football, mate. Thanks, Nat. It's been uh, six months or so. Yeah, a lot, of ha a lot has happened in six months. You were yeah. a single man last time you were here. Oh, I wasn't quite single, I was engaged. Yes. But yeah, and I've been married since then, which has uh, been the highlight of my last six or seven months. Uh, Made the grand final last year for Metro Stars. Unfortunately, I got uh, appendicitis. Yeah, that the was Tuesday tragic. before the grand final. Uh, I was contemplating um, retirement at that stage, but I thought that to go out um, and not having played in the grand final would have been very disappointing for myself. It's probably a bit selfish, mm -hmm. but I thought I could, uh, at 30, still uh, still offer something to the club, and uh, they were they were happy enough to keep me on. Now look, the reason why I've asked you here tonight, now before we get into the Super League segment and talk about how Metro Stars have been going, the reason why I've got you on tonight is that you were in that inaugural Sassy squad under the direction of Martin Crook. What I'd like to know from you, and I've listened to other guys, Aaron Golding and uh, Aaron Vestervelt and other guys that were involved in that, in that uh, squad, what one thing did you get out of uh, Martin's coaching? Something that has taken you up to today's football? The first thing that, um, and I was lucky enough before we go on, uh, not only was I a student, oh, I suppose to say a student uh, under Martin, uh, when I went into the first Sassy squad, that was 1994, mm -hmm. which it seems it's so long ago, it yeah, I, I, making me feel really old. but. <laughs> was that I actually got to work with Martin afterwards, mm -hmm. which uh, I feel very fortunate and privileged to have done. I, I uh, spent two or three years on and off working for the South Australian Soccer Federation, as I was back then. Mm -hmm. uh, was his uh, inane sense of humour, mm -hmm. which uh, really hit me uh, between the eyes. Uh, the best thing about going to work with him was on Mondays, uh, him being a Tottenham supporter, crazy Tottenham <laughs> supporter, and me having followed Arsenal. Uh, as a kid, was uh, the chats we used to have Monday morning about the results, and um, his his uh, his sense of humour just knocked me for six uh, every Monday morning, and uh, worked with Richie Alligich as well, which mm -hmm. was was good. And we always used to have a good chat about things. But look, uh, we uh, you know we we got along really well, me and Martin. We don't always agree on things, uh, but. Uh, there was uh, an immense sense of respect between me and Martin, and um, you know, having, having seen him passed on, it was um, you know div not as difficult as it was for his family, but for for me, it, it hit me pretty hard. And um, not having had a chance to say see you later to Martin, and I'd actually seen him a couple of months before, which was good. But uh, he was uh, just a t terrific bloke. And uh, look, as you do with every coach, look, I've had five or six senior coaches in my, in my career and uh, if I do go on to coach and uh, having spoken to Julie before off air, she said that Martin had said that I should go on to coach, which yes, was yes. excellent. Yes, yes, I think you should yeah, too. Yeah, excellent. Um, I'll take plenty from having what I learnt from him, which was uh, an in a, a really good sense of direction in terms of how I should treat people. And uh, 
He didn't, I was 15 and a half when I went to the SASE program and he didn't treat me like a 15 and a half year old, he treated me like a man, which was good and um, from there I went on and, and, and played not, not enough games for Adelaide City, I, I think, but um, you know, it, it held me in good stead as a person and I said that in my, uh, my message in the paper when I wrote something in the paper after he passed on was that not only did he tr treat me um, well as a player but uh, he taught me a lot as a person mm -hmm. which I was very very grateful for and uh, you know uh, hopefully uh, I'm not the perfect person but uh, hopefully some of the values he instilled in me uh, as a person will hold me in good stead for my kids. Mm -hmm. I have to agree with you there uh, he brought I think the one thing that I've um, noticed from speaking to a huge cross-section of people uh, not only players that he coached but administrators that he worked with and friends is that uh, he brought the best out of people. He, wa he was able to bring the best out of people. Now the best can be either your football prowess, your personality, your commitment to work or your commitment to your family. So um, in those four aspects he was able to get people to bring out the best in themselves and I think that's um, a great attribute to have in these sort of times. Yeah, um, unfortunately as a footballer I, I never went on to be a professional but um, yeah. You were close? Oh yeah, <laughs> look, close but no cigar. And no. Um, Look, I, I've, I've worked for myself now and uh, some of the things I learnt from, from being in that program for two, two and a half years, I've been able to, um, to put it in my professional life at the moment and um, yeah, look, there's no memory I won't forget. We, um, the first year was difficult. He um, he took over a squad which really wasn't put together um, by him. He, what had happened was we'd had a, a group of under 15s and 14s that were just thrown together, and um, Martin got the job in I think late '94, mm. um, and we had no um, we had no training ground, we had no nothing mm. really, and uh, he he had to deal with a difficult situation. There was a lot of negativity in terms of the the, the Institute of Sports squad. Mm -hmm at the time and uh, he took the boys on with the help of John Evans and um, really threw us together. The first year was extremely difficult. We, um, we had no home base. We, we trained between the South Australian Sports Institute at Valletta Road, which had no lights, mm -hmm. and Valletta Road, uh, sorry, uh, and uh, Fulham, uh, where Fulham Gardens play in their, uh, yeah. their amateurs. So we really had, we didn't even have floodlights to mm -hmm. train and um, it was really difficult in the first year. The, the second year, um, we got some, some more structure through Martin being full-time and, and um, I was actually lucky enough to be captain the, the second year and uh, lo and behold, we won the championship in the under-23s, which wasn't a be-all and end-all for Martin. It, not to win a championship, it was more to provide players for, for the national teams, which mm. was his aim. And I think from that time on, from 95 on, his record spoke for itself. You only have to look at guys like Travis Dodd and, and uh, Lucas Pantelis that went through, uh, Ian Fife, and then some of these young guys that have come through like Moroni and, yep. and these types of players that have gone on to play uh, or been through the AOS and, and been through the 17s and the 20s. Yep. Um, I was actually one of the first players to go through the, tw the under 20 Australian squad with Martin and, and lucky enough to do that. So I think the proof's in the pudding that, that he, really, he, he really kicked off what was a, a, a renaissance for South Australian football because before then, um, players that went through the under 20s in the national team were few and far between. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting because we did have Martin on every year um, of the show, all last three years, and the very first year he was on he did speak uh, intensely about the SASE program and what it was and how it was back from that time mm. to now and it has changed quite a bit now because now we've got uh, young men on full-time scholarships, so fantastic stuff. Let's get on to the Super League because obviously we're interested in that. And